Welcome into Jags AM. I'm Kainani Stevens. We're in the month of April now. Free agency is behind us. So now we're looking ahead to the 2024 NFL Draft. Now Brian Sexton is off today. John Ogier is back with me here in studio. We're going to do a deep dive as we start looking into potential draft picks who may be coming to town and positions of interest. Our big thing, number one, is 23 days because there's 23 days until the first day of the NFL Draft. Now a lot of this prep started months and months ago, but... John, they're still looking into things right now, talking to people. How much of this is set in stone at this point, or is there still room to move about who they're looking at? Well, I think their thoughts and their research on guys uh, is mostly set in stone. You're doing sort of uh, punch-out work now, if you will, uh, still setting the board. Uh, once they set that board, it's pretty much set in stone. I think that's a couple weeks down the road. Uh, the work actually started for a lot of these guys a uh, year, year and a half ago. The area scouts actually are already looking ahead to next year's draft, most likely, with uh, you know the uh, setting of the board being done by sort of the upper level guys, Trent Baalke and his uh, and his posse, if you will. <laughs> the posse is getting all in on the big board, so we'll have more on that as the weeks come along, and we'll talk a little bit more about prospects later in the show. We do want to talk about our second big thing, though, which is an extension for Foye Lewis and the linebacker, captain of this team last year was on the final year of a three-year deal, but now we've seen a contract extension for him. John, this was something we weren't really sure. He had a big cap number this year, but now he's going to be around for a bit longer. Yeah, it's a uh, credit to him. Uh, a couple of free agents from the 2021 class seem in line to do this. Christian Kirk is another guy that comes to mind. This might be uh, down the road. Uh, usually players who sign big free agent contracts are two or three year players and don't really become part of your core. Uh, there are exceptions to that, but that's sort of the norm. Foya Luikon led the league in tackles his first year with the Jags, 2022. Came close again last year, solid player. Uh, became a little more of a turnover guy last year. So uh, he's locked up, he's part of the core of this team. And uh, credit to him again, because that doesn't always happen with second contract free agents on new teams. Uh, he's now a Jaguar, I wouldn't say for life, but for the long term, doesn't always happen. Is this extension due to just what the performances we've seen on the field, or is it a bit of an indictment against those two other guys that they drafted just a year ago, two years uh, ago? It, it, I don't think it has much to do with Devin Lloyd, uh, perhaps Chad Muma. Uh, they may have looked at him as a possible replacement when they drafted him in 2022, I think the year was. Mm -hmm. uh, it all runs together at my age. <laughs> uh, Ventrell Miller last year when he was drafted, seemed like a guy who might be an inside backer starter at some point. Ventura didn't get on the field last year at all. He was hurt. So uh, I think circumstance and injury uh, maybe more than an indictment. All right, frees up some money and he'll be here to stay. So that's good leadership to have on this team. But speaking of that extension, there's another extension or new contract that hasn't gotten done, a waiting game. We're still waiting on Josh Allen. And now with those 23 days until the draft, John, we've talked about hoping this deal gets done before the draft. Is that still the plan or is this going to be something that drags out even further? Yeah, I'm not sure there's that much. You know, my experience with these is usually deadlines uh, create deals. I don't know that there's that much of a deadline before the draft because they've already gotten through the lead year, so their cap, they're not trying to get under anything in any sort of deadline like that. Uh, the deadline or the pressure points might be more when they want to sign the rookie class or get other deals done. That might prompt Josh. I don't know that the April 25th start of the draft is a magic deadline beyond the fact that I think they'd like to get this done and get it in order and sort of know what these numbers are going to look like. To me, the two numbers that might matter the most for the next five years, uh, Josh's contract and Trevor's contract when it happens, those will sort of set the template or the tent poles, if you will. Everything else will be worked around that. When they're that big and that perhaps even unusual trying to get certain numbers in certain years, uh, sometimes you want to get that done before you start doing other things. So uh, I think it gets done before July 15th. Don't really have a feel for uh, any date beyond that with Josh Allen. All right, Josh Allen contract watch continues. We'll keep you an eye on that and keep you posted, of course. Um, coming up after the break, we're going to look at some of the cornerback prospects for this year's draft and who the Jags might be targeting.
I'm John Davis, Secretary of the Florida Lottery, and I'm proud to lead an agency that is creating brighter futures for Florida students, families, and communities. As the primary funding source of the Bright Future Scholarship Program, the lottery has helped nearly one million students reach their dream of a post-secondary education. And we will continue to do our part to ensure that every student across this state is aware of these opportunities and has the resources needed to succeed. Because together, we can build a brighter future for all. And that's a Magellan first staff. Move the freight. Move the freight. Move the freight. Would you like to control your own income? Work at Magellan Transport. Voted the coolest office space in Duval. Bring your talents and let your career flourish. Visit their website at MagellanLogistics.com and apply online. Trust service. Trust Magellan. Jags fans, the Everbank Draft Day experience is your chance to score a trip to the Motor City to witness the first round in person. One winner will win a trip for two to Detroit, including airfare, hotel, and tickets to the event on Thursday, April 25th. Enter now at everbank.com slash draft. No purchase necessary. Open to legal residents of the U.S. 18 and older. Enter from March 20th to April 12th, 2024. Visit everbank.com slash draft for official sweepstakes, rules, and other important details. Sponsor and administrator, Everbank NA. Move the freight, move the freight. Magellan Transportation voted coolest office space in Jacksonville. You can apply online at www.magellanlogistics.com. Welcome back to Jags AM here in the Hyundai studios. Kainani Stevens, Brian Sexton not with us. He'll be back next week. But John Osher is back in studio, and that's really all we need this time of year. John, thank you for joining us. Oh, uh, no problem. And it is sort of all you need. It is. It's it. all so we need. We're, we're just talk fine. draft. <laughs> Let's talk draft because we're going to dive into this for the next few weeks pretty much as we all try to guess what's going to go down and probably get it very, very wrong. But we're going to start um, with cornerbacks because that's a position we've talked about. Obviously, that's a skill position that you really only see maybe, you know, a starting cornerback in the first round unless you get super lucky after the fact. So we're going to look at some of the picks that we have ne not necessarily mocked to us, but um, you know, just kind of the top availability mm -hmm. in the cornerback class this year. So, well, um, first of all, uh, on corner, I think it, it's uh, if you had to pick a position right now that makes the most sense for him, it feels like corner is it. I know a lot of people are saying wide receiver, a lot of people are saying offensive line. Uh, corner to me, it still feels like they might not only take one in the first round, but might take one somewhere again uh, by day. I mean. Uh, I say by day four, by round four, mm -hmm. uh, it feels like the biggest need. And it is a spot historically. The good news on that, to me, sometimes offensive linemen can need more time. There's certain positions that need more time. Corner is a position where guys can often come in and be who they are right away. So it's good. It's a young man's position, right, as we always say. So it's good to get some young blood in here. Quinion Mitchell is the guy from Toledo, which you don't see a lot, see a lot of Mac conference guys necessarily. But that's someone where we're looking at. I don't know if he'll fall to 17. It might be something where you needed to trade up, but he's kind of the CB1, if you will, starting out of this class. Yeah, and came out of nowhere a little bit. Has had a really good off season. Uh, he, he's a guy, obviously, when you go to Toledo, people come in with questions. Uh, everything you hear is that he's answered all those questions in terms of the draft. Uh, seems right now like it might be a little surprising if he's there at 17. Um, you sort of mentioned during the break, uh, trading up. Boy, I'd be surprised if they trade up for a corner, mainly because there's so many sitting there sort of in the sweet, in, in the sweet spot of, of number 17. So i uh, not sure there would be a trade up, uh, but if you love a guy, go get him. Fair. Um, Cooper DeJean's probably one of the more versatile corners um, coming out of Iowa. He's someone that I think people think they could probably use in a multitude of ways, may, maybe safety as well, but right. um, just that versatility, that's something we know um, Trent Baalke likes a versatile player, but um, is that someone that you could see in the system or do you think maybe not? Yeah, I think Caitlin Clark's off the board here. Oh, so, she's, yeah. too, she's too expensive. The I Iowa, uh, the Iowa guys. Yeah, um, you know, for what they need, versatility makes sense. Uh, the interesting thing at corner, you feel like Darby, who they've signed, Ronald Darby, and Tyson Campbell are probably their outside corners next year. Uh, possibly wanting to play inside, but it, it, it would be interesting. The challenge for them, I think, is trying to get a guy who can be a long-term outside corner and play nickel early. 
uh, Cooper Dijon with his versatility could fit that again it, it sort of feels like you may have to go up and get him mm -hmm. at this point so um, he makes sense uh, don't know that he'd be available when they're picking uh, but I think that versatility makes a lot of sense for him all right let's go over those two Alabama guys Terry and Arnold Khalid McKinstry um, one of those getting mocked the Jaguars quite mm -hmm. frequently that you've been seeing yeah Terry and Arnold's been, uh, been mocked a lot uh, Kool-Aid I, I don't know as much about I haven't studied him quite as much uh, Terry and Arnold seems like the guy right now that people think will be available, will fill a need. Um, you know, there are people, it's an, it's an interesting draft class uh, for many positions, with Corner being one of them, where there's so many guys that it might be a matter of how you think a guy fits rather than, oh, they didn't go get the quote best guy. Well, they, there is a school of thought here you can go get the best guy for what you need. Um, with Terry and, and other players, there are people who think he might be the best corner in the draft, even though he's only ranked third or fourth right now. So uh, it sounds like he's a fit. It sounds like he's a guy who would work and would be available. Uh, I've probably seen him mocked more to the Jaguars than any other player maybe in the last two or three weeks, which means nothing that means we're not going to get him that's yeah, probably, means what it means. Nothing. <laughs> that's probably so. what it means um and then finally we'll look at um clemson product nate wiggins we've seen him um kind of move up and down a little yeah. bit um is he someone that would fit the system as well or well is that um good 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 player uh again I, I have not sit here and poured through tape on 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 nate wiggins or any of these guys but from what you hear the size you can even see right there yep. uh I never want to call an NFL player frail because it's not that, but his size and frame uh, would is, is going to scare some teams, and you wonder if he fits when this team is getting ready to move to a, an aggressive man-to-man, -man, uh, guard the short pass, be physical. You wonder if that fits what they want to do. Um, if he's the guy there, uh, there's fit. And then there's also the case of, well, you don't want to pass on good players. Mm -hmm. So not ruling Nate Wiggins out, but uh, the frame is, is what you hear pundits talk about with Nate Wiggins and the Jags. Very good. Those are the top five we've got for cornerbacks. We're going to be looking at different positions the next coming weeks. We'll look at a different position group and what we think the Jags are going to be looking at and the top prospects for that. Stay with us, though. We've got Ozone Mailbag questions for you after the break. Jaguars fans are gearing up and saving big at Fanatics.com, the world's largest collection of officially licensed fan gear from all the leagues, teams, and Jaguars players you love. Shop the most trusted brands, exclusive designs by Fanatics, and autograph collectibles from today's biggest stars. Join Fanatics Rewards today and earn fan cash on every purchase. Shop now and get today's special offer. Fanatics.com, officially licensed everything. Hello, I'm Dan Field. We have some great news. Fields has the vehicle you want in stock, priced right, and ready for delivery. Fields Auto Group is Jacksonville's luxury automotive destination for Cadillac, Jaguar, Land Rover, Lexus, Mercedes-Benz, and Porsche. Inventory is back and available for immediate delivery. And every Fields customer can take advantage of our Fields Amenities Program with complimentary loaners, car washes, and our cafe. You deserve the best. Stop by today or go to FieldsAuto.com. Jags fans, the Everbank Draft Day experience is your chance to score a trip to the Motor City to witness the first round in person. One winner will win a trip for two to Detroit, including airfare, hotel, and tickets to the event on Thursday, April 25th. Enter now at everbank.com slash draft. No purchase necessary. Open a legal residence of the U.S. 18 and older. Enter from March 20th to April 12th, 2024. Visit everbank.com slash draft for official sweepstakes, rules, and other important details. Sponsor and administrator, Everbank N.A. Jaguars fans, gear up at Fanatics.com with all the latest styles. Shop now and get today's special offer. Fanatics.com, officially licensed everything. This broadcast is Ozone friendly. -O Welcome back to Jags AM. Ozone is back with us, so we're celebrating. We're going to do some Ozone mailbag questions because, John, we need your answers on all of the things. <laughs> well, yes, uh, uh, I guess you do. Yes, we do. Um, our first question is about the offensive line. There's been a lot of changes to that from what we've seen so far. 
So Daniel from Johnston, Iowa wants to know, a lot of Iowa today. Are you satisfied with the efforts made on fixing the O-line thus far? He says not convinced yet. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not satisfied or unsatisfied. I, I, I guess uh, I wasn't sure what to expect. I, I thought that going into the off season, I thought that they might move on from Brandon Sheriff because of salary cap. Uh, that's the one thing that didn't happen that I thought might happen. Mm -hmm. uh, so. I don't know necessarily that I think they should have because he's a good veteran player. I don't know that he's in the prime of his career anymore, but he certainly, you can get by with good veteran guards who know how to play, and he does. Beyond that, um, they re signed, I mean, you know, they signed Mitch Morse, they re signed Ezra Cleveland, and I think the important thing to remember about Ezra Cleveland, everybody wants to look at, 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 at what the Jaguars did and say, well, they only did one thing. Well, I don't know that we actually saw what Ezra Cleveland can really bring last year. Uh, he, he played five games. It never felt like he got in and got into a rhythm. He was in and out of the lineup, not his fault at all. Um, so their thought clearly is Cam Robinson going in, into his eighth year, Brandon Sheriff goes, going into his tenth, uh, Mitch Morse going into his tenth, and uh, Ezra Cleveland, I believe, going into his fifth or sixth, uh, fifth maybe. Well, that the left side of that, or the, the first three guys I mentioned, that's a little old for my taste. But they clearly look at it and say, we can get there. This is a veteran line who knows what they're doing. Uh, they believe that there will be continuity there. Age makes me wonder about the continuity. I think that's the risk in the continuity card. But you have to believe in something. Right now, they believe in continuity, veteran, that, that this bunch can go do it. Uh, to their credit, they also have some depth. They have Walker Little there. Uh, you believe they'll have Luke Fortner. Um, I also think that somewhere on the first two days of the draft, I think you could see this position addressed to get younger because Cam and Walker Little, both in their last year of their contract and with Morrison Sheriff being 10th year guys, Mm -hmm. uh, they need to draft and get younger behind this now. But um, if they stay healthy, it can work. I think that's the big key. Can an older line that hasn't been healthy in the last couple of seasons stay healthy? Uh, to me, that's the storyline to watch in the offensive line. Health will certainly be an issue. We saw a lot of different lineups last year, so hopefully we can avoid that this season. Second question we have for you here today is going to be about to the defensive backs because we were just talking about cornerback, but would you offer an extension to safety Andre Sisco or cornerback Tyson Campbell this offseason to avoid an inflated number after a possible Pro Bowl season this year? That's yeah, I, I don't think you can. I like both guys a lot. I mean, I, I, uh, I, I'm pulling for them to be core NFL players that you pay. Uh, I think they have the potential to be that. I guess I'm not. Um, they, I think they have the potential to be that I don't know that they've shown enough of that yet to go sign them to long-term deals. And they may not want that yet because you want to prove yourself. You want to have right. a great season before you sign that long-term deal because you might not get that money that right. you're expecting. I think if they were to give them an offer, it's probably not going to be the money yeah. either of them would want right now. And that's what they ran into, if you remember, with Josh Allen last year. Yep. Uh, the Jaguars have gotten a lot of criticism uh, for not signing Josh to a long-term deal when they when the bargain was there when you or, or when it was affordable. Um, I never got the idea at all, ever talking to Josh, that he thought that he had earned the long-term deal that he believed he was capable of, if, if that makes sense. Uh, I, I believe he knew he was worth it, mm -hmm. but also from a league point of view, he hadn't shown that. Uh, so there was no way that was going to get done before this offseason. I kind of feel like, uh, to a lesser degree, Cisco and Campbell, I don't think... Uh, I'm not sure that they are players who will reach Josh's level at his position. Uh, but even so, I, I don't think there's any rush to do it. And it, frankly, I think it'd be a risk to do it at this point. And I'm, I would be surprised if it's on the table. I don't think it is on the table. I think that's definitely something they'll look at next year. And I would imagine they would want to play a full healthy season, both of those players, to hopefully get their highest value. Our final question today for the Ozone Mailbag is, Coming from Art in New Jersey, he says, I think the new kickoff rules will be fun. Do you think they will lead to more running backs returning kicks? Yeah, I, uh, I, I, my first thing was to say no because of the injury factor. And then I sort of rethought it a little bit and read a little bit more about it, and it could. Uh, 
I don't think the Jaguars will use Travis Etienne in that role unless Devin Durbinay were already get hurt. But it does the reason that running backs hadn't been used before was you didn't want to risk your star players for injuries. Um, now I do think you could see more quote star players playing back there. For the Jaguars, they've already got their star returner. Um, so it's going to be interesting. I, I don't know that we know the answer to this question yet. I think it'll evolve next season. But I think you could get back to a point where teams are putting, back in the day when Washington was really good, they would put Daryl Green back there, who was an all-pro uh, cornerback. Uh, and when they needed it, they would put him back on kicks. It was mainly punts. But point being, if you take the injury risk out of it, um, and it does look like this new format will significantly take the injury risk away from the returner, uh, then maybe you will see more running backs. You watch some of the setups they have for XFL yeah. stuff. To, it just looks so strange, but I'm very excited to see that. I'd but it looks be, like the pace. Um, once they get going, it's the same. It does look strange. But the pace does feel more like a running back's pace, if that makes any sense. Yes. Because you're sort of starting more from a standing position. With no one around you, kind of building accelerate. up into it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, I think a lot of this it is to be played out. It'll take some innovative coach to do something. That'll work. People will follow it. This is a good change. I think we can agree on. I think it'll be fun, at least, at least a little bit different. Not. I feel like every time we get a rule change, we're always complaining. With this one, I'm kind of interested in. Well, credit him for trying something sure. because the kickoff had been taken out of the game. Uh, the shame is that I, I've yet to see anything that can bring the onside kick back because of the danger. And I think the onside kick, the way they've got it, having to tell teams you're going to do it, mm -hmm. uh, I, I think it's sort of silly. But. Um, They'll figure out a way to bring that element back, maybe the 4th and 25 pass they've been talking about. But uh, I do think this will add more excitement. It had gotten to the point where we're sitting in the press box and each other, Kai, we didn't even bother watching the kickoff. I know. So, so you sit down uh, after, go get a coffee. That kind of stinks. Yeah. So I think it'll be a good thing to get it back. All right. Um, Stay so with us here on Jags We'll be right back after the break. for the best clearance deal of the year on trucks that deliver power, performance, and savings? Then it's time to say yes during Ford Truck Month. Yes to limited time savings on all remaining 2023 Ford F-150s. And yes to the number one selling trucks 47 years straight, Ford F-Series. Find all your yeses at the clearance sale during Ford Truck Month, only at your local Ford dealer. Based on 1977 through 2023 CY industry reported sales. Jags fans, the Everbank Draft Day Experience is your chance to score a trip to the Motor City to witness the first round in person. One winner will win a trip for two to Detroit, including airfare, hotel, and tickets to the event on Thursday, April 25th. Enter now at everbank.com slash draft. No purchase necessary. Open a legal residence of the U.S. 18 and older. Enter from March 20th to April 12th, 2024. Visit everbank.com slash draft for official sweepstakes, rules, and other important details. Sponsor and administrator, Everbank N.A. Daily's Dash is not only your Jaguars game day stop, but a great place to grab a meal any day of the week. To honor the Jags and the fans, we've crafted the Duval Sub. The Duval comes with freshly sliced turkey, ham, melted cheddar, and habanero jack cheese topped with crisp lettuce, fresh tomatoes, and a double portion of our secret sauce, all served on a fresh roll. Come by your local's Daily's Dash today to get your delicious Duval Sub. Daily's is the official convenience store sponsor of the Jacksonville Jaguars. We're in the Hyundai studios here for Jags AM, closing things out. We mentioned off the top of the show, it's T minus 23 days until the draft. We're in full draft mode, John. Uh, what does that mean for you? Are you looking into all of these particular players, or are you still trying to figure out where yeah, they are? Yeah, I, I look at the first round. Realistically, um, I always kind of laugh when I see seven-round mock drafts. Uh, because they need to tell me the lottery numbers if they can get all that. Well, stuff the first correct. rounds dart to the board <laughs> anyway, and then once you get into the sixth round, for me to try to figure out who they might take in the sixth round, um, you know, uh, more power to you if you can figure it out. But uh, um, it, it's it's mainly trying to look at positions and uh, trying to get a feel for conceptually what they might do. Uh, I'm not one to ever think you can grade a draft, uh, especially right out of the box. 
but I think you can get a feel for uh, did a team do what they wanted to do? Did they go need over best available player, which I think is always uh, dangerous, especially as, as you get deeper in the draft. So it's uh, things like that I try to figure out rather than trying to get into the seventh round uh, defensive end. We talked a little bit about um, trading for picks. Uh, Trent Baalke stockpiled a bunch of them last year. Um, mm -hmm. They have eight this year. Is this something where if they were going to trade up, maybe try to get higher in, in first or second round, would that be something we see now-ish or would that be closer to actual draft day? Well, um, if you're going to do the first round and you have an early pick, you often see it now. Uh, you rarely see it deep in the draft until the draft because teams are usually trading up to – somebody involved is usually trading up to go get a specific player. So if you're Trent right now and you're sitting at 17 uh, – is it worth it to try to go up to nine when theoretically the guy that you're trying to go up and get could be gone? Yep. So you usually don't see that. Uh, I think when Sammy Watkins got traded for, it's been uh, 10, 11 years now. Uh, they knew they were going to make that trade, my understanding is, but they had to wait till a couple of guys got off the board to make sure he was going to be available to get there. And that's, that's sort of the common thing. There's nothing magical about the Sammy Watkins story. Uh, one interesting thing about this draft, it is not considered a very deep draft. Um, it, last year's was maybe the deepest ever. Next year's is supposed to be very, very deep. Uh, this year is not considered great in the sixth or seventh round. Uh, so that can play into, it, it, it can theoretically make trading more difficult because people really don't care about getting anything then. So you're not really going to be getting people to give up anything to get into those rounds. So uh, will that play out that way? Probably not, because usually once guys get into the sixth, seventh round, they figure out something that they like and they get antsy and they want to trade. So, but not considered a very deep draft. All right. Well, we will deep dive into this. As we mentioned, we're going to be talking about it for the next 23 days. So we'll keep you covered there. We'll see you back here next week on Jags AM.